So once again, I'm here to review some Year 7 stuff. This time we're looking at some shapes. Uh, first, we're going to kick off with some triangles. So three kinds of triangle categorized by angle size. Now, this is called an acute angle triangle because all of the angles are acute, less than 90 degrees. This is called a right angle triangle because one of the angles is 90 degrees. Only one of them could be 90 degrees. And this is called an obtuse angle triangle because one of the angles, and only one of them, is obtuse. All right, so that's categorized by angle size. And we can also categorize by side length. So we have equilateral triangles where all of the side lengths are the same. We have isosceles triangle where only two of the side lengths are the same. And we have scalene triangles where all three sides are different. Now, these can also be categorized the other way that we were talking about, which is categorized by angle size. So this is an acute triangle because they're all less than 90 degrees. This is also an acute triangle because they're all less than um, 90 degrees. And this one here is an obtuse triangle. Um, not necessarily the case for these ones. For instance, an isosceles triangle can also be a right angle, depending on how you draw it. But we can categorize triangles using these two different methods. So two quick properties of triangles and their angles that we need to talk about. If you have a triangle, say like this somewhere, we know that all of the angles in the triangle will add up to exactly 180 degrees. Now, I'm not going to prove that here. You've probably already done that before. You can come and talk to me if you want me to prove it for you. But, for example, 70 plus 60 plus 50 adds up to 180. And it doesn't matter what the triangle looks like. That's always going to be the case. This is, of course, extraordinarily useful information because... If you didn't know the third angle and you wanted to find it, you could do so by saying 70 plus 60 adds up to 130. I know that the internal angles add up to 180, so therefore 180 minus 130 is 50 degrees. Useful. The other rule that teachers insist on you knowing is one that looks a bit more like this. Uh, let's call that 70 degrees. Let's call that 40 degrees. All right, if I extend this line out here, I know that that angle is going to be equal to the sum of those angles. 70 plus 40 is 110. That angle is definitely 110 degrees. So this can be stated as the exterior angle. This is the exterior angle equal to the two opposite sides. The exterior angle is equal to the sum of the two opposite sides. Now, I remember being confused by this at school, so let me draw it for you a different way. If I was to draw this line down here instead, this would also be 110 degrees. This would be the exterior angle, and it would be the sum of these two as well. And it's obvious why that would be the case, because these two are vertically opposite. Now, of course, if you were to forget this rule, nine times out of 10, you'll be okay because you'll be able to use the angle sum to find this one. 70 plus 40 is 110. Uh, 180 minus 110 is 70. So you'll figure out that that is 70 degrees. And if you can figure out that is 70 degrees, you can use the supplementary rule to find that. You'll find that all these angle rules, they're all linked to each other. So often if you forget one, you can use the others to get to the same place. So quadrilateral rules, we're going to jump through this really quickly. Quad means four, so these are four-sided shapes. If you draw any four-sided shape, it doesn't matter what it looks like, the internal angles of that four-sided shape are going to add up to 360 degrees. Of course, it's not hard to see why that is. You can always take a quadrilateral and cut it in half. If you cut it in half, you'll have two triangles. The angles in this triangle have to add up to 180 the angles in this triangle have to add up to 180, so altogether it's going to add up to 360. Now an interesting rule is the one for the kite here. Now a kite is one where there are two equal sides meeting at a point and two other equal sides meeting at a point. Now in a kite, this angle here and this angle here are always equal. Now again, it's not very hard to see why this is. A kite is made up of two triangles two special triangles, two isosceles triangles. Now, in an isosceles triangle, these angles are the same. In this isosceles triangle, these angles are the same. So if these are the same and these are the same, then the sum, this and this, must be equal to this and this. That's why it works. Finally, let's do a rule for a parallelogram. 
Now this angle is going to be equal to this angle right here and this angle is going to be equal right there. I'll leave you to think about why it is that those two are equal, but my hint here is to think in terms of parallel lines and transversals. All right, that's a bunch of rules out of the way. In the next one, we'll do a bunch of examples that use these sorts of ideas.